Hey guys, Vince here. Today I'm going to share with you a small little project that Ed gave me for the shop. He wanted me to modify a handful of hex bolts to fit a Torx wrench for a custom fixturing application. Spoiler alert, we didn't break a tool, even though they were 20 thousandths thick. Uh, I couldn't even see the fluce in my own eyes. But anyway, let's make some metal powder. In Fusion, I start off by drawing just the head of the bolt, because that's all I was going to be machining. I created a sketch and I transferred measurements from the Torx key and I drew a whole bunch of hexagons and circles and I extruded that into my final Torx pattern. This is also where I found out what size tool I'd need to cut those contours. Those lobes have a diameter of just 26 thou across so that got me into some of the small tools and luckily I had a Harvey 3 flute 20 thou end mill. A tool that's diameter is the same as 5 human hairs which is pretty crazy to think about. These are the Harvey tools that we used. Tool number 945520. I also took a picture of the key and I used it as a canvas just so I could overlay it and make sure I had everything perfect and you know, just double check the measurements with a visual. One of the first things I did was go on the Proven Cut website to see if we had any recipes already for this tool diameter in steel. And we did not. So I took this opportunity to start fresh. And uh, even though it's a little scary because it's a teeny tiny tool, I'll uh, walk you through my process and show you how to do it. Let's take a look at the Harvey feeds and speeds. They actually didn't have any feeds and speeds listed for this diameter end mill. So what I ended up doing was taking some of their recommendations for slotting as far as percentages and modifying them to an adaptive recipe. I then started plugging some numbers into Millalyzer and I came up with an axial engagement of three thousandths of an inch, which is 15%. A radial engagement of 8 thousandths of an inch, which is 40%. An RPM of 10,000, which is the max RPM for the 1100MX. And that comes to a service feed of 52.4. My feed was 12.2 inches per minute for a chip load of 4 tenths, which is still really big compared to the recommendations, but uh, tool stress looked good, forces looked good, so I ran with it. And they work pretty well, especially for being a three flute. However, I think for the next batch, we're going to run some of these Lakeshore Carbide 020 Mighty Min four flutes, just because I know the bolt is probably a little bit harder material. So might as well go with a four flute, something that maybe has a, a little bit bigger core. Plus they are coated. For the adaptive toolpath, I chose to just rough out the entire section of the center, even though I know it has a hex in there. Uh, this was because I wasn't sure if those hexes were going to be in a different spot or, you know, how accurate all that was. So I just chose to, you know, treat it like it was a solid piece of material. To finish the walls, I used a contour toolpath and I didn't want to ramp in and cut on the bottom of the end mill. So what I did was I just plunged and then I had a very slight lead in and lead out. It worked out really well. I ended up having to use negative two thou radial stock to leave to dial in the fit exactly to where I wanted. And I adjust the feed speed to compensate for the chip thinning as well. For the fixed train, I went with the simplest thing possible. I just clamped a couple nuts. I then used washers to space the bolt, and I used another small washer to index the bolt. Next, we had to find the center of our part. For that, I used a hymer, and I quickly indicated it in. It was pretty simple to do and pretty fast, and the hymer is really becoming one of my favorite pieces of equipment to use. I did have to touch off Z every time, but I got that down to, I think, I don't know, sub 10 seconds, wasn't too bad. I know some of you are gonna ask why we had to clock the bolt and why I had to change the zero every time of the Z. And that's because I was using the full reach of the end mill and I didn't wanna accidentally machine a couple of thou higher than the machine thought it was gonna be because even that much is just gonna mean total death to the end mill. The other reason was the bolt started out with a hex that was very close to the desired shape that we wanted to machine. And if you were to have that rotation off, means you'd actually be machining more than you had to and you'd have less engagement on the sides. On a production run, what I did was make a soft jaw to where I could put all these bolts in at the same height and then I ran a half inch tool over the top to skim them and from there I was able to just use one Z height and have the whole program run automatically. I also was able to put a small chamfer on the inside and the outside just to keep everything nice and fresh and fur free. So there you go, folks. 
fun little project and we have a couple new proven cut recipes to upload. 18 parts done from start to finish with the same end mill. For the roughing we went with a tried and true, low axial, high radial depth of cut. I feel like that cut strategy really stabilizes the end mill. With a tool this size and a material that we didn't know the exact hardness, it was best to play it safe and it definitely worked out for us. Some of the biggest advice I can give you for running small end mills like this is definitely start on the low side. As you can see, these end mills can tolerate quite a small chip load. And uh, use your RPM. I really wish I could have spun that at, I don't know, 30K. Well, thank you guys for joining me and uh, we'll see you next time.